Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Hello, contemplators. First things first, kids. Uh, Gypsy's surgery went very well. It did, indeed. And she and Opie are both with us today, so if you hear any... Clickety clacks. Clickety clacks, <laughs> that would be her. Uh, yeah, very, very clingy. <laughs> yeah, very clingy, and we kind of need to be on top of her. So Yeah, so apologies. Yes, but anywho... Anywho... Let's... Talk about what the fuck <laughs> we fucking did over the past two fucking weeks. So first off, we tried to do the reaction thing. Yes. Oh, uh, God. This was so fucking annoying. So this film came about from a community of mine that it was so it was so bad that I thought it would be fun if we do a reaction video of Jirak watching it for the first time and... We had a blast doing it. Uh, it's, it's sounded okay, and I uploaded it on our YouTube channel. Yeah, it got taken down within a couple hours due to yes, there there thing is there's nudity in this film, but this film it's on YouTube. Right, and that hasn't been taken. Down. It hasn't been taken down. It's up. It's been on YouTube for like five years. Mm-hmm. And other people have watched it and streamed it, so I tried putting it back up again. Tried a little, you know, a couple different things, and it, it it still got taken down. So what? Oh, I, so even your live stream got taken no, down? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I, haven't, I haven't done. I haven't said that yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Because I tried uploading it twice okay. to our channel. Yes. And then I decided to live stream me kind of watching it with people, so they can kind of watch it. And I think the problem was. We didn't pause it no. while we were watching it because I was pausing it and I was talking with people and I was oh. explaining things. So if you guys are still interested, I can. Well, first of all, I'll if you guys really want to watch this movie for yourselves, I will put a link to it on YouTube. It's called Cricket Snapper and maybe I'll put up my live stream yeah. if you guys want to watch me watch our reaction <laughs> video. <laughs> it's a little inception going on there. Yes. But yes, and I tr I'm I tried very very hard to really watch it and try to maybe understand this film a little better because you know the the production value, you know, it's not very good. It was really it's really hard to hear the dialogue. Yeah. Cuz they just whatever like any background sounds were completely just swallowing the dialogue high school fucking high, fucking high school like videos for fucking history class yeah. or any kind of shit is better than what yeah. the fuck we just watched and i just like i try and i'll it's not even i mean it's not even on fucking imdb but like i really tried to put in because it's been a while but like i loved in uh in college i loved taking avant-garde yeah. theater and i'm like maybe this is something like i don't know experimental surrealism like i i don't know something yeah but we'll we'll, we'll, we'll uh we'll get there we'll get there we'll get there but for today we've got the wine it's called the kinker and the label speaks for itself the label speaks for itself it's very futuristic ballet S and M, like futurism. Yeah. In some futurism with some, some vintage. Some vintage. Yeah, yes. it's really the bottle is gorgeous. It's a 2018 Paso Robles, California. Let's see, cellared and bottled by Four Wines Winery. Nothing, you know, this really could have like had some really nice kinky, playful. Yeah. Description, but it doesn't. But I think the picture is. Uh, it speaks. It speaks for speaks itself. For yes. Itself. So let us have it. All right. How you like? I agree. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, it's not, not bad. Dry. It's it's pretty dry and it doesn't have that much of um of an aftertaste. Not really. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of bland and. Little little bland. Uh. I I mean, yeah. If you guys know, I kind of like a little bit of a bite. Yeah. A little bit of a bite. It like has a. A brief bite brief for like bite. a fucking minute. It's a little nibble. Like a sec, exactly. <laughs> it is. It's just a little pinch. Little and then it ooh, just, a little yeah, pinch. Yeah, and then it just goes away. I've been goosed. You've been. <laughs> I've been goosed. I've been goosed. Jesus. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, I'm 
glad we're back. <laughs> yeah, me too. God. All right, now it's time for the handy dandy Shakespearean duck. Are the pipes okay? No, but no, but no, but. All right, what do we got? What did I get? I got lubberly, muddy, melted starv lackey. Lubberly, awkward, clumsy, loutish. Uh, muddy, melted, dull, spirited. Star- muddy what? Muddy. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, muddy metal. Muddy metal. Did I say muddy melted? You did. Oh, god damn it. It's okay. Probably means the same. No, dyslexia. Uh, Dull spirited. Starve lackey. One who starves his servants. We've gotten that. We've gotten that one before. Kind of perfect. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Kind of. We'll see. All right. Now you don't have to ask me the question. This movie. This movie means absolutely nothing to me except for pure enjoyment that someone was in this that is disgusting but at the same time it's fucking hilarious yeah uh so this movie is called cricket snapper on wikipedia it's an independent film written and directed oh also produced by lawson wells the film is based on a true story of barbara asher who was charged but acquitted of the manslaughter and dismemberment of Michael Lord, a New Hampshire man who allegedly suffered a heart attack while chained in her dungeon. Rather than call the authorities, police says uh, said Asher confessed she and her boyfriend chopped up Lord's body in the bathtub and dumped it behind a main restaurant. Uh, DNA testing after her bathtub revealed none of Lord's DNA or any evidence of of cleaning agents. Mm -hmm. So according to the Quincy Patriot Ledger story covering the film's Mm -hmm. Boston premiere on May 6, 2011, the dominatrix boyfriend, Miguel Fierre, was charged with being an accessory after the fact has never been tried but fled after being indicted. Oh, See, fuck. but you know what? This we don't get to. We don't get any of this we in the movie. We don't get shit. We don't get any of this in the film, and we'll we'll talk about that too. But here's the thing: this film, it they started filming in like 2002, yeah, and finished filming in 2005, and then it premiered in uh, in Wells's film so he honestly uh, Lawson thought he really thought himself to be Orson Wells oh my god he truly believed that like from what i've heard that's he changed his name that's not his, it's not his legal name but that's his his stage name Orson Welles. in Wells's film the dominatrix and her husband dump the body and they get hunted down i mean i, I don't want to give away all of the you know the whole plot but so, and the the movie, it, I believe it was, let's see. So I have two separate release dates. On, on Wikipedia, it says it released October 10th, 2005, on the 20th anniversary of the death of Orson Welles. But on the description on the YouTube, mm-hmm. on the YouTube, on the tubes. Tuber. On Father Orson Welles' birthday of May 6, 2011, Cricket Snapper finally premiered at the Magic Room in Bridgeton, Boston, Massachusetts. Wait a minute. Father Orson Welles? He, like... I don't know. Is that... Oh, my God. He wrote this. Oh, my God. And this this movie was uh, funded by the Church of Satan. Also, oh. also the soundtrack... Church of Satan priests, uh, priests Anton LaVey and Peter H. Gilmore. Well, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And a lot of actresses in this movie, they walked out. So the majority of like the strippers, probably. That and probably the people that Lawson was in scenes with. Mm. According to him, he believes that this film really does depict what the world of BDSM is. Mm. And... He was really trying to portray, he was trying to make it real. Oh. It didn't really look real to me in the movie, but he was just like, oh, they just couldn't handle it because we were really trying to portray the raw, full life of BDSM. No, you really fucking weren't. No. I mean, not that I know anything about the BDSM right. world, but what I saw was some fake fucking, you know, just bullshit. Like, yep. I don't know. Yeah, guys, this this isn't something that... But I don't know. I 
I'd like to know, we don't really have the question right. that we normally ask, but is it a so bad it's good kind of movie? Mm. I guess we can contemplate that. Yeah, I guess we can. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, we can try. So the opening credits mm -hmm. was way too long. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. And the... Like I said in our whatever the fuck. Yeah. I was... I felt like we were like watching a 70s porn opener. Yeah. Like what the fuck was going on? Yeah, maybe and I can release just the audio track of us. Maybe. Doing, of us watching it. Maybe. That could, that's, that's something to think about. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. But it, it was very misleading. It, it made us feel like we're going into a horror movie. Yeah. The music was very ominous and just had these weird demonic sounds mm -hmm. and just Fucking we're out in the woods bob ross nightmare it was a bob ross nightmare absolutely so there's certain parts of the film that is like based on true life and i feel like what lawson did is he took two ideas he took this murder and then he took this idea of the fucking title of the movie which really has nothing to do with the fucking movie right. cricket snapper yeah. And we kind of learn what a fucking cricket snapper is uh, later on. But we finally get to this bar. Mm -hmm. And it's this woman and a man. They're playing pool. Little like, she's trying to be like, but you know, we were uh, recently watching Mystic Pizza. She was yeah. trying her best like Julia Roberts. Like, oh, I'm, I'm so innocent, but watch me like, you know, fucking play your ass. Right. You know? Oh, God, what a mess that all mm -hmm. was. And I love it. She like hit, I don't even remember. Yeah, the man's I, in a business suit, and she's in, honestly, something that I would have worn maybe back in, like, middle school trying to be sexy. Right. It was, like, kind of a tight black skirt with a backless top and some Daria boots. Ooh, Daria. Yeah, I mean, those were cute. And it, and it is, it's really hard to hear the fucking dialogue. Mm -hmm. He's, I don't know, he's kind of like, oh, you're kicking my ass or something and, and whatever. And because like the music. Yeah. And we like randomly get shots of like the bartender pouring drinks. Like how, what does that have to do with right. the story? Our heroes, is that drink getting poisoned for, for her? Like, <laughs> uh, Lord help I us. Know. I don't, yeah. Yeah. This film, I think. They tried a little too hard to be like artsy with their camera shots. Right. Mm -hmm. They're. It was. It was. It's like you said. It's like they hired a bunch of high school kids uh, to to work the cameras, work the boom mic if they had one. Yep. And carry the cords around. Zach and Marie made a porno. It had better had fucking better. set. Yeah. They had better, better, better a cinema. better fucking crew. Than yeah. <laughs> And we fucking saw. Yeah. Dear God. Because then we all of a sudden see her leave the bar and we end the shot with her boots. Yeah. Like, why is that important mm. to end the shot on the boots? And the next scene, we see a woman <laughs> suspended <laughs> wearing a BDSM pig mask. In a sex swing. In like a sex swing. And she's, and she's hog tied. She's hog tied. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She's wearing these like. She's wearing an eye mask and these cassette tape headphones, <laughs> which I'm, I'm sure their plan was to like, oh, they were supposed to be uh, sound canceling headphones. Yeah. No, nah, nah, right. bro, no, nah, bro, no, nah, bro. <laughs> God. So the chick and the guy, they're, they're together and he's... I mean, we have to assume he's, it's... He's fucking it's the guy. Yeah, we have to assume it's the guy from the bar because he's wearing a mask. Right. His arms and, like, wrists are tied up. He's right. kind of naked, wearing, like, a black... Looking like the gimp. Looking like, like, yeah. Yeah. Like the gimp and... He's a filleted man. And they're playing a little Fifty Shades before Fifty Shades. The room right. was red. <laughs> there was a lot of kink, somewhat kinky shit happening and yep. she's in this you know dominatrix outfit fine you know she looked she looked great in it you know whatever yeah, sure yeah. sure um, i just couldn't get over the fact that the leather kept squeaking it just kept making it sound way. like she was farting <laughs> i know the entire fucking time i'm like is she fucking farting what is happening is yeah it, exactly it, huh? it was huh? her boots they were these like thigh high patent leather fucking boots that she did not practice wearing yeah because honey could not walk in them right <laughs> couldn't walk in them boots no i like leather not yeah latex <laughs> i mean 
in my opinion, the, the Fifty Shades Red Room scenes were more hardcore than this. Absolutely. She was whipping him with, with some thing. I don't know what, I don't know terms. I, I don't know what these particular... She, yeah, I don't know. Fucking, I don't know. Tools, Fan I guess. Fan whip. Who yeah, knows yeah. What it was. And she was whipping him, but like... It, it yes, looked, mistress. Yeah, but it, it was so like light. Yeah. You know, like, and then she, like, most of the time she was using her hands because she's wearing like rubber glove hands mm -hmm. to like, she was just touching his body. Yeah. Like, how is that anything? I, it just, it just, it doesn't make sense. I nothing, don't know. Is, nothing is making sense already, Again, guys. Again, it's, it's, it's kids playing house. Like, I don't yeah. understand. It, 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 ugh, Lord. Yeah, and like at some point, it sounded like the dude was crying, and we get like somewhat of a character breakdown of the man thanks to our mistress. Right. He's this. He's a town selectman, Max Colfax. Well, whatever. I don't know. Nothing kinky about this at all. No. It's just yeah. It, it's kids playing dungeon. Right. <laughs> it's kids. It's kids playing dungeon. It is. Bye. The whole set. Bye. <laughs> No, at Toys R Us Kids. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my she decides god. to she decides to leave him hanging for a little bit so yeah. she can, he can think about what he's done or I don't know. Goes up for a smoke. Sees Uncle Henry. She does go up for a smoke because well, we get into this other room and there's this fucking what kind of guy would you call this guy? Oh, I would call him the uh, overweight fucking low life uncle who wears your typical fucking wife beater. Uh, white with uh, stains and beer and piss all over it. Yeah. Uh, his ass is out in some ridiculous the entire jeans. Time. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, stereotype. Hello. Yeah. So he's like watching the game. He's like, oh, come on. What you doing over here? You yeah. Got that... Apparently we're in Jersey. I don't. It's the, well, that wasn't Jersey. I think we're in like Massachusetts, I believe. Is that the Massachusetts dialect? Maybe. For our fucking Jersey people or Massachusetts people, please help. I don't but know. who knows? All I know is but, that it was exactly what you did. Is, well, come on here. We're watching the game. Get him out of there. I just heard like three different dialects. Well, <laughs> I'm not very good anymore, so. I know. We're rusty. Um, But then these like double doors open and then our mistress comes out with this like smoke. It's as if she came out of Tiger Beat. <laughs> And like this, like the smoke, Bright light. the smog machine yeah. is coming out. She's got her leather on, and she's just like, "Ugh, look at this. Who I live with?" Because yeah, at first, because at first you were like, "Wait, where are we now?" Right. You thought we were in like a completely different like location. I did. Yeah. yeah. I was like, "God, she just left his ass and yeah. just went to a bar, and she's still wearing that shit." Yeah, but um, the guy knows what she's doing. Like, knows what her yeah occupation is i guess he he's all for it apparently you know it must be nice to be able to work from home you know yeah nice you know you to be with your family a little yeah because he walks up to her and we get oh god we get this nice belly fucking shot like right coming at us you right. know and he's like and he's purposefully scratching it like he's trying too hard to play the i'm the disgusting boyfriend role right. and he had these really ugly sharpie Cross tattoos. Oh, God. I forgot about that shit. Yeah. Yeah. They fucking sharpied tattoos on. Yep. So. Oh, Lord. Yeah. I, I guess they just couldn't afford good a good mic system because I, I, even the fucking captions for YouTube couldn't pick up what the fuck they were saying. Yeah. It helped me a little bit, but I really, I had to watch this way, way more than I wanted to. That's why I feel like I procrastinated talking about this because I'm just like at this point I'm, I'm like over it but we're still gonna have a good time <laughs> no we're gonna have a good time I I mean I'm not gonna lie I, I felt set like this was the one episode that I was like back burner back burner back burner back burner back burner, burner, back burner, back burner. Back burner. yeah I do we, not want to fuck do not want to fucking <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like from what I was really trying to listen they want to blackmail this selectman mm-hmm for money, it seems like. And the dude tries to get frisky with our mistress and then tries to say, hey, how about you, me, and Piglet? <laughs> so he knows about the suspend, the, the, pig the hog-tied yeah. Piglet swinging 
swinging off the rafters. And she's all pissed at him. She's like, you've never been like this with any of our other house slaves. So I guess this is a thing that they do. I guess, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. And then we get sh- uh, shots back to the dungeon. Max looks like he's struggling a little bit. In the background, we start hearing like a heartbeat sound. Yeah. And it starts to get a little faster and he starts to like struggle a little bit. And he's kind of like panicking. And then all of a sudden his head drops. Yeah. That's it. So apparently we're supposed to think he suffocated or had a heart attack. Uh Uh-huh. And we get, see, this is where I feel like I've heard that there is a different cut of this movie with some some parts taken out and added. Don't don't know where that is. Don't want to know. Because... Like the next scene, we're, we're we're cut to this hallway. The camera's like like at the like floor level, mm. and we see our mistress trying to walk down this hallway. And there's I'm pretty sure that it was fucking uh, carpeted floors, but they had candles. Yeah. Yeah. Who would do that? Oh God. See, I'm thinking if this was her way of trying to set the mood for her client, maybe like carry like this is how she walks him down to her dungeon trying to look all you know like you know hey yeah put a little flare on it but has it been there the whole time right like why the place hasn't like burned down with all that leather like that fake leather shit everything's gonna fucking burn down (laughs) so she gets back to max he's not moving she like pushes his head a couple times and then she like all of a sudden starts panicking right Calling for, I think his name's Bob. Bob. Uncle Bob. Uncle, Uncle Bob. Yeah, Uncle Bob. And they're like making out. Yeah, and, Bob. and Bob comes down, slightly touches him. We get we get a camera shot. We see the camera. Yeah, we do. Yep. The scene, right? A couple yeah. times we get to see some cameras, guys. Yeah. yeah. And like, <laughs> of course she's freaking out. Her leather is going. Like, I just started to do it. I just didn't do anything. Get him out of there. Yeah. And then he does this, like, overperformance of, like, when they're trying to get him off the lift thing. Yeah. It's like, and he's just like, oh, my God, look at me. I'm struggling. And he was trying to, I love when they was trying to uncuff the dude or whatever. And all he was doing was literally just grabbing mm-hmm. and, like, turning. Mm-hmm. He wasn't trying to unlatch or anything. He was just like, how do you do this? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck He, is he was acting. On? Oh, he's amazing. <laughs> and the little piglets just swing in there. Bobbing her head from side to side, listening to whatever music. I don't know. And the guy's dead. They take Listen the mat. to fucking pigs rattle and like ma- mud. mating or something. <laughs> so the guy's dead. I told you not to beat on him so hard. I didn't do it. No, I didn't. You should have fucked this shit. She takes off her fucking horrible wig oh, and God. she has this like really bad like pixie cut like way to like represent girls with pixie cuts right yeah. bitch yeah so i honestly i kept calling him like bubba or something i don't fucking That's know a better name it? bubba's his better name comes up with a brilliant plan to dump him in the pond like he fell on his own he fell through the ice yeah we got you gotta make a call are you listening to me like when he, every time he finished he finished a sentence he had to end it like this yeah she goes to the bathroom and she makes a phone call on her Nokia phone. And she's like, get the fuck over here right now, right now. Oh my God, oh my God, what are we going to do? <laughs> Everyone's going to find out. <laughs> That's pretty much right. spot on. I nailed it. You did. <laughs> Emmy. Emmy. And then we get into like a, like every, then it changes to like a black and white film. Yeah. They are dragging this guy's body. She's still wearing her fucking dominatrix outfit, right. which is pretty much a black thong, a corset, and her boots. Yeah, she's wearing like a jacket and a scarf, but even her 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 guy is more bundled up than, than she, she is. is. Yeah. And, the, and it's snowing. How do how do you fucking walk in that shit? Let's Where? go ahead and say that the Wells probably wanted her to fucking do that. Yeah, yeah we want to get the guys to moo. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, because. The guys in the movie are fucking dogs. I'm sorry. And the women, <laughs> majority of them were really actually good looking. Yeah. You know some what I mean? They were pretty you know? attractive. Yeah. They were pretty attractive. Nice. Yeah, I don't know. It, it was just the weird co- like contrast of just, I don't know. It, 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 make, it makes sense to me now thinking why this film was a passion project probably for this guy. Because he couldn't get any. Probably. Yeah. So... God. So he's in like a body bag and they chuck him in the That's right. He trips and falls in the ice in a fucking body bag. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, like, why would you... They were going to try to say that he was drunk and fell in the ice in the pond. Right. They threw him in the body bag. Mm-hmm. Oops, I, I'm so drunk, I slipped into this body bag and barrel rolled it into the pond. Right. It happens all the time, man. It does. Especially not north. Yep. <laughs> That's your friend in the wood chipper there. That's your friend in the wood chipper there. And we hear this clicking sound while they're trying to, like, yeah. leave. It, yeah, it's like a... It, 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 it's the same sound. I remember going to Universal Studios and there was an a- animal actor's studio show where they yeah. would bring out animals that work in television and movies. And Oh, yeah, it's clicker training. Yeah, yeah, clicker training. That's what it sounded like to me. Fucking Boo Radley, like, slips in the ice... <laughs> And then we see a a bow and arrow. Yeah. Shoots him in the back. Right. Oh! Ah! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she's all like, oh my god! Yeah, she's like on the run. She's panicking. And then she gets, her foot gets caught in like a bear trap. And Yeah, how random. How random. Yeah, so I don't someone know. Someone was going hunting. I don't know. Right. And then we still hear the like the, the little sound while she's like screaming and panicking we cut back to the dungeon and piglet is still swinging yeah we are swinging from the chandelier is that you mistress yeah oh, god is that you mistress yeah, yeah yeah that's right she's like oh mistress oh i've missed you oh punish me please punish me hypnotize me someone's like touching her yeah and then they do something to suffocate mm-hmm and mercy, mercy, mercy. <laughs> was that their word? I guess it was. <laughs> their, instead of like red. Red, yeah. Mercy, mercy, mercy. mercy. So she's dead. We don't know who's doing this. I we... love when they were fucking, uh, when the leather chick, mm-hmm. mistress or whatever, they took her back alive yeah. or whatever. And then yep. the knife is like caressing her. And then they go to the fucking, to the metal loop ring and start cut her bra ding, 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 ding. Yeah, yeah they just start fu- like he's trying to cut the fucking yeah, <laughs> i was like, like what the fuck is happening like the person like they're trying to go for oh my god they they're loving this they're teasing their victim to scare them like this is something like it just it, it wasn't like that it no. was fucking awkward yeah and this girl is supposed to be in panic mode i mean honestly good for her for like acting the way she did Acting scared. I think in real life, if that happened to me, I'd laugh. If someone did it if exactly like that. If somebody did that. that in real life, and I'm like literally being kidnapped and shit, and then they just start, I'd be fucking dying laughing. Yeah. I'd be, Can you do that? Again? And the music, it's like this demonic Ren Fair type of music. It just yeah. really didn't. It it didn't match. Right. But. Our bad guy, yep, he's doing the, the thing with the knife, and she's begging and pleading for her life. He's honestly, like, he starts tying her up. He's just groping her. Yeah. This person. And it kind of seems like maybe the mistress kind of knows the person. Because mm-hmm. she's, like, begging, like, oh, I won't say anything, or blah, 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 whatever. And he turns her on her stomach, and then we hear a... Yeah. So we have to assume... Slits her throat. Uh, yeah, I guess he slits her throat. You yeah. know, we obviously don't get to see it, but, you know. Next scene... Oh, God. There's, like, a tiny scene where this, like, kid that's, like, completely mute. He's, like, fishing. Mm. He, fought, he like, sees the body and he just, like, screams. The, the body bag in the water. Oh, yeah. We don't hear the scream. He just goes and, like, runs away. <laughs> And, there's, and these, like, people are in jackets or walking. It just kind of looks like it's, like, the police and whatnot, mm-hmm. which it is. Uh, a guy is, like, hovering over this body, and some other guy kind of sneaks up behind him. And we meet our hero. Yeah. What do we got here? Oh, your typical run-of-the-mill town body. What's that supposed to Like, they say it twice. Run-of-the-mill town body. I don't know. Like, is that supposed to be, like, kind con- a word for like common i guess run of the mill like yeah i guess i don't know yeah. it's just but i just couldn't get away from his shitty mustache god who the fuck just, i mean he had the mustache where he literally took his razor and just did the middle yeah he he shaved the middle and then had two stupid fucking like someone called it the reverse hitler yeah I don't... I think that that... Somewhat, I, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I hate mustaches. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. 
So our hero's name is Al. He's the detective. And get this, our detective is also our writer and our director. Woo! Uh, writer, director, plus our actor. <laughs> Dark place. Dark, Dark place. place. <laughs> and, I, and he... Visionary. Put some money into this movie as well. Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver. And they're talking about what's wrong with the body. There's other, there's other bodies that were found. You know, Al's like, she's practically hogtied, but she should be on her back instead of her <laughs> belly. <laughs> Clearly, yeah, he didn't. <sighs> he thought he didn't need to t- do another take of that. Right. You know, it's, it's kind of like the movie Twilight with not Twilight. Yeah, Twilight with all those fucking pauses. You can't change me. <laughs> so Al's hunch is that the killer is a hunter and it was premeditated cold-blooded murder right cool and I guess Al he's like he, he's been getting bored of like country crime fighting and wanted to like transfer to Boston to do like the big time crime fights and one of the other like cops like yeah be careful what you wish for look what you got here now Mm. they find the clicking device yeah don't know what it is and they go down into the red room with his partner they find all the enemas and the little oh yeah little wonder how this would feel on a tight ass (laughs) why would you say that yeah this would feel on a tight ass yeah it's like a ruler or like a riding crop or something i don't fucking know oh god and then, like, they, they find Piglet, and it's really weird. Like, he, Piglet's name is, like, Peggy, and, like, the mistress's name is, like, Linda. Linda and Bob were married. I don't know. And, like, Al, like, actually, like, caresses the little Piglet's head. Mm. Like, why are you touching her like that? Like, he has this little glimpse of, like, oh, my God. Like, did he know her? I'm turned on. Maybe, yeah. Maybe yeah. he's turned on. I don't know. Like, we're already supposed to get, oh, no. This cop has some sort of like dark past, or he's you know he's haunted by something. Yeah, I don't fucking know. And then some random dude walks in there. I guess he's like another town selectman, and Al isn't like happy about him being around. He's just like you stooping around in my crime scene. Just get the hell out of here. You want to get me angry? I don't know. And then we see like the piglet lived in like this pig pen of just oh, hay God. and these like signs that someone printed from fucking work using, using like using google docs or something <laughs> like mistress is watching oh my god um oh and, and i don't think you we didn't talk about it uh when we were reacting to it but every so often you'll see little hints of 666 oh, oh. Mm-hmm. hello mm-hmm. and yeah, all the room had was like toi- a toilet and hay, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Al finds this like Lisa Frank diary, and then he like pockets it. That's supposed to be evidence, but whatever. Lisa Frank. Lisa, Lisa Frank. You still don't know what Lisa Frank is, man. It's these like trapper keepers, these folders that were like full of like unicorns and kittens. I think I... Look, if you see a picture... No, I know what it is. I just didn't know that they were named Lisa fucking Frank. Yeah, that's... I mean, that type of Yeah, style. I remember seeing yeah. those all the fucking time. Yeah, I'm sure your sister had They those. had the lock and the key mm-hmm. and the... Yep. Yeah, yeah. I love they even show him trying to unlock it. Yeah. <laughs> and the key. I was like, God, fuck. And I feel like, like some of the dialogue, and that's, and that's when they you say... They say again, the ordinary run-of-the-mill townspeople. Like, I feel like the actor, Al Lawson, he, you can, I can tell that he likes film noir. Mm-hmm. He likes that detective story who he's trying to think of, like, he's trying to solve a murder, but he's going through something, and then we'll see this later. There's, there's the femme fatale that's in this, that's, that could be part of the crime, but she's seducing him. Right. But... It's not done well. No. <laughs> it's not. I mean, there's a way to modernize fucking film noir. I mean, Body Heat, hello. I mean, even that's kind of a, an older film too, but still. Right. But like the dialogue, it switches from, out of all the how here, she had to come into mind. What are you doing over here? Like, it, it was mixing contemporary speak and old Hollywood speak. Right. We it, were com- we were we were crossing the streams of the generations. Yes. Essentially, yeah. And they got. And even the fucking outfits. He was doing the same fucking thing. He was like, he had the long trench coat looking like a private eye, and then all of a sudden he's wearing a zoot suit. Yep. Or like some kind of shit. It's like, what the fuck? We really are playing house. Yeah. You went into your fucking granddad's closet. <laughs> 
and fucking just started getting shit and was like, what could I wear for today's scene? That creeped the fuck out of me. Holy shit. Yeah, All right. <laughs> but... Yeah, the costumes were really weird, especially his. It's like you can tell, oh, he had all the costumes because yeah. he changed his outfit so many goddamn times. And throughout the film, because they filmed it within a couple, took, took a couple years, right. his hair changed. Oh, yeah. He either had spiky hair or it was shaved. He had the mustache. Some, at some point, he had a goatee. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. keeping with the times. I guess. Spiky hair. But yeah. hair doesn't grow that fucking fast. And... Well. Al somehow thinks that someone is trying to expose the townspeople for their perversions. Mm. That's kind of his theory, because the one that died, Linda, the mistress, was saying that no one knows about their arrangement because he's ashamed of it and uh. whatnot. And they, Anne, him, her and the husband, Bob, were, were saying that they're going to blackmail him. Uh. So it's all about this town that seems innocent yeah when you're a stranger we get a lot of scenes in a bar yeah and it's just fucking weird and there's a one point he broke the the fucking he broke the fourth wall right and started talking to us oh god what did he say did i write something about acting accordingly and obeying the law means lying i guess he like agrees people are hiding so is he team killer i don't know it's like he's sick of he's kind of disgusted by people's perversions too i don't know it, it this goes so up and down i i, tr- I tried very hard to yeah. follow what the fuck was going on and i'm sorry guys i i'm hope hopefully i'm doing okay but it's not my fault it's, well, it's like show. it's like that i mean i don't know i guess if that's the route it's going it's like okay so he's disgusted by how the bdsm shit and everything is but at the end of the day he finds it sexually stimulating and he fucking is into it yeah so it's like he's bashing the fact that this is wrong but you know what i'm gonna read piggy's diary and then i'm gonna do that fucking ridiculous like fake i'm oh jacking my off god that was the worst scene ever like, out of Jesus everything Christ. like Grabbed his dick and just started flopping it just in fop- his fucking yeah. boxers. And I was like, what the, the gray- fuck is happening? Yeah, like the gray loose boxers where you can see everything. Yeah. If it were black boxers, you wouldn't really see much. But something about the gray, you see everything. Yeah, he's just fucking flop, flop, flop. Yeah. What the fuck? And there's a lot of like different scenes of him drinking alone at the bar and just having like... The camera starts to slow down a little bit. Things start to sound distorted. Like, it's pretty early in the game for a fucking cop to go through, like, this spiraling of madness, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Like, it's so early in the case. Why is he cracking now? Right. I don't, you know... (laughs) Like, are we trying to go Mad Max here? Are we trying to go fucking Max Payne? What's going on? Yeah, something. Let's see. Oh, oh, we get to meet the chief. The ch- he, he who looks like a fucking bitter math teacher who's who's <laughs> way who should have retired oh years my ago, god. but spent his retirement on a on a fishing boat and regrets it. Oh my god! It's it's that and that exchange. It's very cliche and it's funny because we you know, watching a uh, dark place. Yeah. How like. The fuck it, the DA is on my ass. Like, you gotta right. fucking crack this case and fucking shit. You better keep your nose clean and don't fuck up. Uh, if I listen go. Listen to me, Dag. Li- listen to me, Dag. You better. <laughs> or my ass is cross. <laughs> <laughs> if I go down, you're going down with me. You hear me? <laughs> oh, oh, God. Wow. So he, he's, he looks through uh, Linda, the mistress's black book, calls the number, looking for someone named Helena. He then goes to where she works. Sun's going down. Some cheesy, sexy music starts playing. And, and we are off to the strip club 69. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. G-string diva. Yes. And while I'm pouring this, talk about the scene. Let's talk about the, uh, the uh, what are we seeing at the club? All right. So at this fucking club, we've got stripper, stripper, strippers. And it's legit. It's a bunch of different strippers. It's like three or four different strippers, but they're literally doing the same moves, and it's on loop. Yep. So you got one, like, shaking her tits on the pole, and then it shoots to one who's, like, knees down, and then she's rubbing her clit, and then it's like, what the fuck's happening? And then another one's bent over, and then she's rubbing the clit from the back. Spanking. A lot of spanking. Spanking, and then it's like... 
Never. loop. It's like, okay, we're seeing the exact same thing over and over again. And yeah. then it's him. He goes, he's talking to the fucking Helena or whatever yep. her name is. And she's like, hi, what's got like a fucking Asian Jane Brady. Care to buy me a cocktail? <laughs> Like she's she's trying to play the the femme fatale. It's mm-hmm. pretty much what it is. Like everything that she says, she tries to put a little sex talk right into the, the I don't know. And then she accentuates the, the syllables to make it sound sexy. Yeah, and then they're talking, and then all of a sudden we go back to the strippers, and we're watching the strippers, and then he pops his head into a room and goes, "Where'd you go?" <laughs> it's like what the fuck just happened? Yeah, we went. I from- felt like I was high, and I just teleported. From, like, the kitchen to the bathroom, and I'm staring at myself in the mirror going, what happened? You know, like, <laughs> checking my eyes. I was yeah. like, where did I go? We go from the bar to, like, the champagne room, and she's like, I just wanted to come in here. Where did you go? I had to take a wicked piss up. Why is it always... We get a lot of shots of him taking a piss, too, and that's fucking weird. Yeah, well, I mean... And he doesn't probably... wash his hands. Well, he's probably got a fucking... His, his, his fucking uh, prostate probably needs to be checked. I mean, who knows? Maybe. But anywho. Anywho. He's a cop. You know, stress. Yeah, and her excuse for leaving the bar was she thought she saw someone she recognized and then right. just decided to go into this one room. Al asks why she was, I guess she was at Mistress's house that night. Helena answers because she's, oh, what the fuck? Oh, okay. So Helena says she's another one of Mistress's slaves, I guess. Yeah. They grew up together. They used to play house and spank each other. Like, so playing house, hey, we call, you kind of called it. Oh, God. This random chick in a pink little bikini comes in. I didn't order a lap dance. No, I did. Right. <laughs> she's all, you know, she's trying to distract him from the case by using sex. Yeah. So it's. Why don't you go grab a smoke? Yeah, <laughs> go grab a smoke. <laughs> grab a smoke. I want, I want to call her Nomi. Okay. Oh, God. Because it's very like Nomi Malone going into the room, giving Zach and Crystal the lap dance scene. Yeah. <laughs> God. <sighs> so excited. So excited. So And I'm like wondering how they were able to cast like some good looking women. I mean, did they did they sell their souls to the devil? Like, thank thank you, Lucifer, for all this bod. It looks like they straight up went to a strip club and were like, we'll pay you fucking two hundred dollars. Ooh. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, I think they did. That's happened before. Yeah. With movies, really? actually. Yeah, yeah. I can't fuck. Light bulb just went up. I can't remember which fucking one. Or it was in a t- on a TV show. Where they were looking for strippers. Fuck it. it, Don't. don't, I'm not going down that road. All right. I don't. It's gonna take me a while. I I did talk about how they went through a a lot of different actresses because some of them fucking left. They stormed out. Right. Cause like I was trying to write down the dialogue. Cause what does she say? She said something like, "I'd let you." Bend me. Oh my god, yeah. I'd let you bend me over and fuck me up the ass blue. Yeah, make turn me black and blue turn while, I eat, and blue while I eat out your sister. Right. What yeah. the I, fuck I would, does that mean? I would let you bend me over, fuck me up the ass, spank my bottom blue and while I eat out your sister. Yeah. It was some shit like that, and it was just the, the fuck it. But I would never kill anyone. That's what it that's what it was. Yeah. Shit like that. I do some really weird shit, but killing, I draw the line. That's exactly like I'll do all that kinky shit, but I'm not a killer kind of thing. And then right. there's this other line where she's like, "But what kind of cop are you anyway?" Here she is, disguised as a stripper to hide their faces from hell. I don't know. And then something. It's like st- the Church of Satan was like, "You need to talk about Satan, hell, and all other kinds of shit." Well, we get a lot of shots this. of churches. Mm-hmm. One one church. Mm. We we do see that. And then they start kissing. Oh. Whatever. And they told Nomi to fucking li- to take a hike, get a drink, so they can chat and... Oh, he says so they can, like, chat and party? I don't fucking know. And uh, Helena overheard Linda and fucking Bob talk about the town selectmen while uh, Helena was eating her out. 
So she kind of knew about the town selectmen because they were doing, 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 the doing the nest. I, I don't know a selectman. I don't know. Man, I don't know what that is either. Then he bring he brings up the cricket snapper. He's like, I don't know what it is. And then we we hear that Helena has a boyfriend named Todd, and that's her alibi. Mm-hmm. And then we get some more ass smacking and more crack rubbing from the ensemble. Helena starts to give Al a lap dance. They make out. Al fondles her like a fucking creep. It's just really weird. But yeah, I don't know. She's trying to play like this vamp. I get it. Right. And then we we uh, learn that Todd is like the jealous type. So, okay, so he might be a suspect or something. Or you don't want to talk to Todd because he's a hothead. And he's, right. he could hurt you or something. Yeah. yeah. And Al wants to go have a chat with Todd. With Todd. And he just walks in the house like he lives yep. there. And the motherfucker just, who are you? And it's just Jorn or whatever the fuck. Oh, our, 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 boy, our, our boy Jorn. Our, your boy Jorn. Yeah, he's uh, wearing his famous bandana, cuffed, cuffed jeans, and he's not cutting meat. He's like shuffling meat. He's, yeah. he's, he's like moving the, the meat from he's one side of the cutting. He's trying to look busy. He's... That's it. He's trying to look fucking busy. An actor looks busy. Yeah. And yes. he's got blood all over his fucking white shirt. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, come Is on. Is he a butcher? Like, I, I don't know. Who the fuck knows what the goddamn hell they were trying and to do? And apparently Todd has been locked up before. But what type of person who is locked up leaves their door unlocked? Someone knocks and you just say, come on in. Door's open. Who does that? Oh, that but who does that is? anyway? Who does that anyway? Oh, God. But, it's probably Mike from across the street. Yeah. So I guess Todd, like, he's he's putting on this act that he, I don't know if it's an act. I mean, we don't know. We don't know this, Todd. That he's been trying to go straight since he's been locked up. He's done some petty crimes. We don't know what they what they were. Stealing condoms. Something. I don't know. Stealing genie bottles or some shit. But, and he has these, like, those stupid cliche, like, cop insults like must be standing too close to the oven because i smell bacon Roasting. Right. Boom. Ooh. Ooh. bacon so oink it. oink cop i get it kids i was a youngster too <laughs> and like but he's like he's this total like bit, bitter betty about how society has treated him and and whatnot he can't get a decent job and that somehow pisses al off and he Punches Todd in the face. Yeah. Fakest punch I've ever seen in my fucking life. Because Todd just goes straight to the floor. Like, pretend... Like, he's one of those Karens that, like... Goes, oh, no! Oh! She, she tried to hit me! Right. She tried to hit me! You saw it? You saw it? She saw it! <laughs> and then, like... Al, like, pulls up fucking Todd and puts his face to the fucking... The oh, stove? The stove. The electric stove. I, I, I know it's hot. You can burn yourself. I burned my fingers before. But, like, the shot, it just looks like that Al is just fucking Todd from behind. <laughs> while he's, like, <laughs> pushing. Because he's, like, pushing on him. Like, if I hear that you do anything to Helena, <laughs> if, I, if I see a bruise or a scratch on her, and, and like, fucking Todd's just, like, his teeth are out, grinning. He's like, yeah, yeah, I hear you, I hear Grinding, you. Stop yeah. it. It's not hurting me. <laughs> like the pillow is going in dry. He, he went in dry. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then, I don't know if we're at, we're at Al's office or his house, but he's, like, looking at all, like, the evidence. He's got the, the diary. He's got the pig mask and, like, a collar. Yeah. I don't know. He opens the diary, and then we start hearing these, like, voiceovers that are supposed to be... Piglet, but the voice does not sound because we get to hear Piglet, Piglet Peggy, her yeah. voice. That honestly, the voiceover sounds like Helena. Oh. So maybe I missed something, and may who knows? Or maybe the person playing Piglet was one of the girls that to just left. jump ship. Yeah, she's like, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all I'm doing is standing in a set swing, and you're gonna not even standing. Me. Yeah, was she like, wasn't even standing. I'm swinging in a sex swing, and I'm wearing a pig mask. And you're gonna fondle me? Like what the fuck? Yeah, and I, I know someone that's in like that's been in like the BDSM community, and I asked him like a couple questions. Part of me wanted to like, and if you were down for this, if we had time to like kind of add in his perspective. Hello, contemplators. Help me welcome the Tickle Pea Shivers. How are you doing today? Hello there. I'm doing great. How are you? 
Awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. Yay! Okay, so my first question is, on a scale between one click to like five clicks of a cricket snapper, how close did this movie portray the real BDSM world? In my personal opinion, I want to say about minus 25 clicks on the cricket snapper. <laughs> like there's a, there's a good... Or not a good. There's a there's an idea at least behind what the director was trying to do, mm -hmm. but it is, in my opinion, a uh, in my opinion, it's a direct example of of everything that BDSM is not. Okay. And not everybody. Well, some people. Well, a lot of people actually have gotten into um, gotten into the BDSM community out of some sort of trauma. Like myself, I do feel like I'm one of those people. Mm -hmm. But. The way that the director tries to portray the people in in that community at least in this community in, in his own world they're using that as just like their main defining personality and that's just weird in my opinion as a weirdo yeah there was something that in the film the woman who was the like piglet slave mm -hmm. to the married couple in her diary she reveals that she would disobey on purpose for her mistress to punish her mm. is that is that a thing i yeah it is it is a thing and honestly it's something that i that i've come to learn um i mean i'm i'm i guess i don't know you could say i'm more of a bottom leaning switch and sometimes even as a switch even as a bottom i have done some things not like super outwardly disobedient or disrespectful to make my to make my dominant punish me if you're doing that kind of thing then yeah that's wrong i would consider that toxic behavior mm. and the best thing in that kind of situation with a sub if they're being that kind of blatantly disrespectful or you know whatever they're considering trying to be playful the best thing to do is just not play their game okay like a couple times in the movie it showed our hero slash anti-hero measure the girls with tape measure is that a form of practice or because when i googled it it the only thing that i found from the handy dandy google was how to measure your body for any type of like bdsm like collars or attire i've seen some weird things I've seen a lot of weird things a lot of weird stuff that is definitely one of the weirdest things that I've not necessarily heard of. Like, maybe that's what it was. Maybe they were measuring their, you know, the, their bodies to, you know, for, for some sort of fitting or something like that. I'm not really, I don't know. But, uh, you know, again, with the director, like, I'm not even certain. Like, I'm certain on some degree he knows what he was trying to do. Mm -hmm. But that seems like something that... I don't know, not even he, like if somebody actually asked him like, hey, what was that about? Then he'd probably pull a Neil brain and be like, well, it's whatever you think it is. And, yeah, <laughs> he'd pull like, oh, it's avant-garde. It's, it's however it's you, avant yeah, however you, however you proceeded. Yeah. I just found it weird because when I think of like tape measuring, I think of inches. Is it a punishment mm -hmm. if the sub grew any like inches and that just... Maybe. I don't know, like everybody, everybody's got like their different kinks and their different protocols and things like that in the BDSM community. Mm -hmm. You know, not everything, I don't know, I, I, I myself, and if anybody in the contemplation department has uh, <laughs> any kind of background with the BDSM community, the term, your kink is not my kink, comes to mind. And, you know, there are a lot of people who are a lot of in, into a lot of different things that other people might find weird. Instead of attacking that person, Unless they're doing something to, like, you know, willfully or voluntarily harm somebody or something, mm -hmm. then I would definitely step in and be like, yeah, this this, this is not the kind of, this is not kink. This is just psychopath yeah. crap. It was just, that movie... That movie was very weird. And the cricket snapper thing, like, I, I, I would have been more accepting of it if uh, the cricket snapper was actually used for something that, like... I don't know some sort of behavioral some sort of behavioral yes. play because that's what uh, that's what people I don't know, I know at least I, I forgot about that fact about the, how the cricket snappers were used like back in Vietnam and and or wherever they were World too. War II, I don't yeah. know, used them back in the yeah but nowadays I see a lot of cricket snappers being used in dog training mm -hmm. you know again if you're doing like 
like hockey play or something like that, or even if you're just playing with a normal, well, not normal person who's not, you know, of like any kind of animal play or something like that, that could be the idea there. There was just no point behind it, and it was just like he just wanted to shoehorn this one little factoid in there mm -hmm. and be like, yeah, this is the title, and this is gonna be cool. I don't know. It was a very odd experience. And, uh, but honestly, <laughs> I would recommend that movie over Fifty Shades of Grey, really, because... Really? While I haven't seen the remaining installments of that franchise, mm. I saw the very first movie, and, uh, just no. Just a whole lot of no. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then the same thing with, with Christian Grey, which just, like... The trauma-based development of, of interest in the BDSM, we also just have the just control factor of like, you know, this is what I want, and if you want me, then these are just going to have to be the things that you do. To me, it felt like it was just more of a control thing and not yeah. a practice. Yeah, if Christian Grey looked like, uh, I don't know, perfect example, Lauren Armstrong, <laughs> and he decided to, you know, travel out of state to, uh, see Ramona and everybody there would be like this is weird what are you doing thank you so much for putting your input on this I think mm. it's it's really helpful because like you know this is a real world and I feel like this film Cricket Snapper and then also Fifty Shades just put it in a light where it doesn't make sense with the story, like I, I go on saying like, is he, at first it seems like he's like disgusted by it, but then he's kind of inquisitive about it. And then he starts to explore it. And then it like drives him into this like type of like madness in some way. The way he was introduced, and again, you know, you kind of have to ease people into these kinds of things. You can't just like, you know, you can't just shove a bunch of weird stuff into somebody's face mm -hmm. and not expect them to, you know, themselves in back or walk away or run, really. Like, uh, when he was talking to the love interest at first, and I'm not gonna repeat what she said, <laughs> but, uh, he said some very weird, very hardcore, very just downright weird things yep. to him. And I think if anybody went hard at this guy, or anybody went hard like, like this woman did with this guy, then, then yeah, I, I wouldn't blame them feeling like it's all weird, disgusting stuff. You know, if you talk to somebody like a normal human being about, you know, wanting to be choked every once in a while, I'm pretty sure they'll actually, like, sit and listen for a couple of minutes. Again, it's a matter of communication, mm. but I guess constructive communication. That's a good one, constructive <laughs> communication. Yeah, there's none of that in that movie. In, in Cricket Snapper, it seems like a lot of just manipulation. Yeah. Just toxic behavior. Well, I loved all of this. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm Abs happy to be here. Absolutely, and hopefully we'll get to summon you again. Tickle pea shivers. Awesome. Whistles, yo-yos. <laughs> My grandmother riding by on a tricycle gives me the finger and a duck. What? Black sheep. Black sheep. Black sheep. Okay. He's so talking to a little girl. Okay. <laughs> a circus midget, two clowns. Whips, chains, whistles, yo-yos. My grandmother riding by on a bicycle gives me the finger and a duck. I don't know. Are you crying? Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Can you put your daddy on the phone? Are you crying? Okay. We get some more natural splendor shots and like there's this random scene. Al pulls over a guy who's doing this World War II reenactment. I don't oh, fucking know. God, yeah, it has nothing to do with nothing. I mean, maybe it'll help us with the plot at some point. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't do shit. Yeah, and then like we're at a house and Helena is like scrubbing the floors wearing nothing but a thong, an apron, and a chain wrapped around her ankle. Right. Al comes in and I don't even, like are they trying to go for like some type of comedy with this? I don't fucking know. Yeah. But Al comes in and he's like, he wants to get clothes that Todd was wearing the night of the murder to do some like testing and whatnot and probably should have asked Todd that already. Right. But I guess if Todd was at her house, I don't fucking know. It just doesn't fucking make sense. Todd's not gonna be around her anymore because Al scared him, I don't know. If he was like abusing Helena, then why isn't he like already locked up? Like right. why why wasn't he put into like any type of like custody if he was a suspect? I mean, wouldn't you know, like instead of I don't know, I'm not a policeman, but I... but from watching movies there's a type of you know, you find someone that could be a suspect, you take him to the station and you you question him. Yeah. 
You know, I mean, that whole time that, you know, after Al was with Todd, Todd could have been getting rid of evidence, burnt the clothes that he was in, or doing something to... Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Helena, like, continues with her, like, sexual innuendos, and he... Al doesn't judge Helena for her lifestyle choice, and he has this, like, weird line, maybe Jesus is a masochist. Whatever. Church of Satan! Church of Satan! And then they start making out, and, like, he pulls out his gun, and, like... He looks, it looks like he's about to, like, fucking shoot her. But he just, he's trying to find a place to put the gun. Oh, God. It was really awkward because he, like, picks her up. And there's this sex scene that is so fucking awkward. Like, it's probably, like, the like the worst sex scene. It's probably, like, more worse than The Room. Yeah. Like, fucking her belly button weird. Oh, God, yeah. And then, like, Helena starts choking him. And he makes these weird, like, sounds and faces. Like, oh, my God, what is this sensation? So sudden and new. <laughs> I felt the moment. I was turning blue. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't know. I was taught next day, whatever, I was talking to his partner. And then something about hot dogs. So I guess they hit a wall in the case. Uh-huh. Something doesn't jive here, Wendy. And I don't like it. It doesn't jive. Yeah. So they're now, like, finally. So, okay, so now they're, like, finally meeting with, like, forensics. Right. To, like, look at the body. But I guess there's a reason for that. Uh, the doc said that keeping the dead body in a cooler will bring up new clues of, I guess, I don't fucking know. Hmm. And Al's, like, puking. Like, I don't know if he's puking because he's been drinking Pregnant. and then eating. He's preggers. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Rosemary's baby. You know, Satan's baby. It, you know, it can happen. Yeah, yeah. Max's body. Drink this tea. Uh, Max had a drug problem. He had opiates. I don't know. Then fucking Al is at his house and he's like, it just, there's a lot of jumps from one place to another. And it's, it just, it doesn't connect. Mm-hmm. He, I guess he's now so fixated on Helena. He's like drinking vodka straight out of the bottle. And they want, he wants to like hook up with her again. And then, yes, we get the masturbating scene. Oh, yeah. Which is fucking, like the, ugh, guys. The camera <laughs> was right there on his junk. And we get these, it's these fan, we get a lot of fantasy scenes, or I don't know if they're fantasies. Did they really happen? Fucking Al's tape measuring these women, spanking them, doing BDSM shit. But, and I'm thinking he's starting to maybe get into this BDSM world. Yeah. He's wanting more, whatever. I, I don't know. Yep. The character's like, interested. When I looked up the tape measuring thing, the only thing that I found that where it connects to BDSM is when they... Uh, the site says, how to take your measurements for bondage gear and collars. Wow. So maybe that's it. They, he was measuring them for bo- bondage. for bondage stuff, I guess. Yeah, and there's it's just the, the the that scene is just weird. Helena is like masturbating in a dog crate, and then like she's masturbating wearing the pig mask oh, with the yeah. chain around her while she's reading the diary. It's just I love my mistress so much. And then yes, this is when we meet someone who was actually like the best actor in the whole film. Right. Was the old man. Yeah, the World War II veteran. Yeah, the World War II veteran, and I guess this guy jerry bedastrian he was a veteran of the d-day landings and worked on rod sterling's twilight zone series before working on independent films mm. so this guy actually has some credits there he goes he kind of has some credits but yeah al wants to ask him what's this cricket thing for and it's a some tactic that they use for world war ii so they would know paratroopers or something something shit. like that yeah so that's something that another factoid that we know Lawson and like hey I want to put that in my movie right just like the murder oh hey this sounds interesting I want to put it in my movie too yeah let's try to connect them all together right yeah let's have the killer make a fucking sound every fucking five seconds yeah and like Al starts like randomly eating the old guy's like ribs yeah (laughs) Yeah. Hi, Al. How you doing? Yeah, hi, Al. Great, yeah. So this is a crooked snapper. And then, like, that one other statesman guy who eyes looked like they were trying to, like, escape each other. Oh, he was a statesman? He was another statesman. And oh, okay. then, apparently, he was also a client of Linda's, and... I thought he was, like, a cop. No. 
Um, I didn't see that. But he was a client of Linda's, and he talked to Linda the night of the murders, and their conversation was how to up their up the stakes for their meetings, and the next time they got together, they were, he, she was going to put the guy, Jack, in a diaper mm. and do some diaper play. But he was a suspect for a minute, but then he's not because, well, whatever. So it just feels like... How long do you think it's been so far with this case? I mean, I I don't know. It feels like forever. Yeah. It really does. This movie felt like forever. The movie is fucking forever. Yeah. It fucking, yeah, it is. Because, like, the only thing that Al still is going, he's still going through Linda's black book. Right. Still. And it feels like it's... Like I said, it's been forever. I mean, hence all the fucking haircuts, apparently. And, like, Helena walks into the same bar that Al's in, and she has some, like, young dude in, like, a dog collar and, like, a chain leash, and he's all, like, turned on by it. He makes this weird, like, O-face thing, like, uh-huh. ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> and it, obviously, it fucking makes Al jealous, and he's upset, and uh, I guess Helena, I mean, I, I heard there is a thing when someone's a sub can be can be both a sub and a dom mm-hmm. so there's that and helena just completely blows al off and he's you know he's fucking depressed about it and like he makes this and this is when some random fucking shit happens and this is the stuff where i'm thinking he made this movie for his own fucking fat material right because we get a lot of random scenes of him just fucking these random women that have nothing to do with the story. You, we don't see them again. Yeah. All it is is just, hey, I'm coming over. Here's some, let's have some tea. Okay, here we go. Put on a fucking pig mask and let me use you as a fucking coffee table. Right. Like, what the fuck does that have anything to do with? Like, if he was spiraling into, like, some type of, like, madness or whatever, maybe, but. Yeah, I don't know. This was for his own enjoyment. Yeah. And this is the shit that kind of pisses me off. I mean, I'm sorry, you guys, Some a lot of you guys won't know the whole, like, Jorn thing, but this is, like, a lot of behavior that he himself was doing. And it's like, was this Lawson guy, like, a hero of his? I don't know. I don't know why I keep clapping my hands. Because <laughs> you're getting fucking heated. Yeah, I'm getting heated. He, like, hypnotizes the chick. I don't know. And then they just fuck. We get another Al and Chief scene. This is your last chance. The fuck or the fucking DA is gonna, he's gonna take over the case. Yeah. Get your shit together. Fucking, we've been seeing you from going to ba to ba. Keep your dick in your pants. Oh shit. Oh, my God. And apparently, we get a timeline. It's only been a couple days. Oh, my God. It feels like months. I know. It's been taking this dude months to crack this case, and it's only been a few fucking days. So yeah, the DA's trying to take over the case, and Al's not happy about it, and he refuses to let that happen. Like, he's so determined right. to crack this case. You know what he does? What? He goes to another chick's house and spanks her and fucks her. Wow. That's what he does. Jesus. Such an anti-hero. Yeah. Like, rubs his feet. Like, this is where I'm like, this is for him himself. Mm-hmm. Like, he's, like, rubbing his feet on the chick's, like, nipples. It's... So is this, like, an extended scene or something? No. Did they cut this or was this in there? This was in the movie that you watched. Oh, my God. She was in, like, she was in the pig mask and he was, like, mm. putting his feet on top of her back. Then she, like, switched into this, like, Grecian... Yeah, all right. Cheap Grecian looking outfit. She like blows him and then like passes out. Oh, God. I don't know. Oh. So they get, we get, we now get like back to the station and Al's partner tells him, this is where I get, I got confused too, but I just, I just gave up. That the, Al's partner says that Todd also talked to Linda the mistress the same night as the killing and apparently Al did take boots of Todd's from Helena's house for like DNA testing. And then there was something with tracks and mud. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, why didn't I see it before? Todd's the killer, Yeah. I guess. Hey, and then we get this action scene of these like cop cars pulling into like fucking Todd's house. And they're like, got their sunglasses on. They got their fucking guns out. They're like, all right, we're going in. <laughs> Agent Smith. 
Agent Smith, yeah. And they fucking go upstairs. Al's partner beats him to it. She goes downstairs and she's like, he's locked himself in the bathroom and he says he's gonna kill himself. Al goes upstairs. The door, the bathroom door is not locked. Mm -hmm. So he's not locked in the bathroom. He's just in the bathroom saying he's gonna shoot himself. And then we see fucking Todd. He's in the bathroom with another fucking bandana with his like shotgun to his face. And he has this fucking look on his face that just... Creepy it's ass fucking smile. creepy. Yeah. It's a creepy smile. Al goes to the toilet to like sit down. He's just, all right, Todd. Just hold on. <laughs> takes off his <laughs> his gloves. Takes off his jacket. And then Todd starts to put the shotgun into his mouth. Smiles. And then Al pulls his gun on Todd. Don't you do it, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> and then Todd blows his fucking brains out. <laughs> You and kill yourself, I will kill you. Exactly. Like, what the fuck? And then, like, t like fucking Al, he gets so upset by this that he starts to cry. Yeah. I thought he hated Todd. Why is he crying that Todd <sighs> just blew his fucking brains out? <laughs> I don't get it! I don't. There's not enough wine in the world. My brain hurts! I know. I have such a headache already. God. There's another drunken fucking spiral scene. He's at a bar. He's playing this, like untuned piano we get another another fucking fantasy is it a flashback was he married i don't know this other chick who gets undressed he's measuring her she's bent over she he's spanking her the ruler i don't know he like hypnotizes her too i don't fucking know and then, like, Al shows up to Helena's house. He's, like, fucking drunk and so just, like, emotionally, like, oh, my God, this is so distraught. And Helena's like, you finally figured out what you want? And he just says, I want you. <laughs> she makes him, like, undress and, like, tells him to, like, spank her with a paddle. He starts spanking her and she's just like, harder! You're nothing! You're nothing! Harder! Yeah. <laughs> And then she like turns the tables and then she starts doming him. Yeah. And then cut to, it says, a week later, Todd like, no, why do I keep calling him Todd? Todd. Al wakes up. The camera is weird. I don't know if they use like a fish lens or something to make it look somewhat distorted. He's like, he's, he's handcuffed. There's like old wine on the desk table and there's this like taxidermy alligator and al tries to like he's in this room alone mm -hmm. and he like gets up but he can't walk like was she starving him or was he is he just so like exhausted from all the all the spanking and the torture right i don't fucking know this he's woman he's the new piggy he's the new piggy i guess but he's not wearing the, the mask this woman comes out and they kind of i feel like they definitely did this on purpose but we know, we know it's Helena, but she's wearing Linda's wig and is kind of wearing the same outfit that mm -hmm. Lin Linda was wearing in the beginning. Because Al's like, Linda, Linda, I don't understand what's <laughs> going on. And it's we, we know it's Helena. Mm -hmm. And I, oh God, I tried, guys. I tried. I'm thinking maybe Helena was, this was her ha ha ha. This was somewhat my, either her master plan all along or it wasn't her plan, but then she turned the tables to make it things happen in her favor. Cause she, cause I couldn't hear because fucking Al's wearing all these chains and they kept hitting the, the wooden floors. Yeah. So I couldn't fucking hear what she was fucking saying. And I guess like Linda used to hypnotize Helena and make her do awful sexual things and take pictures of her, something weird with a dog, Linda, was gonna send those photos to her parents and Helena guess, you know, now has to do what Linda wants and that was help hide Max's body. But then Helena tells Todd that she was also fucking Bob and that got Todd jealous and that's why he killed Bob and then he went home crying like a bitch because he killed someone. So I'm thinking was Helena, the one that killed Piglet and Linda. I thought she was. Yeah. 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 So I think there's that. The the way the person was like touching her was it, it looked like they were trying to seem like familiar. Right. 
But, and Al this whole time was just like, please. <laughs> and she starts to walk away. Al finds his gun, shoots Helena. He gets so upset that he shoots himself. And that, my friends, is Cricket Snapper. Mm. I have never been so excited for one of our episodes. <laughs> to be over. <laughs> to be done. <laughs> we did this for you guys. Yeah, we did. Jesus fucking the Christ. This was to thank everyone who really supported us during Gypsy's GoFundMe. It was fun doing the reaction video. Hopefully, it was. We I should c- try to put that up here. I want to try to do something with it. Like, yeah, record the audio, something so you guys could listen to it. But, I mean, it's more fun because you can see the video. I don't, right. I don't know. We'll, maybe we'll, we'll, figure, we'll, it we'll figure it out. We'll figure yeah. it out. But, yeah. So, any, any thoughts? Please. I know I was I, doing most of the talking. Now. I would rather super glue my ass to a chair wrapped in barbed wire, being forced to watch Troll 2 mm. fucking uh, The Room and every Ed Wood film on fucking repeat than ever watch this goddamn horrific piece of shit ever the fucking So day. would you say it's so, it's not so bad, it's so good? I, I it's don't. It's not one of those so bad, it's good movies? I guess for the first watch. Just to say, yes, but the more you watch it, the more you fucking hate life. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm telling yep, you. you. You you nailed it. The first time we watched it for the reaction video, I was like, okay. This is fucking hilarious. Yeah, but then it was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Why the fuck am I coming back to this? Yep. I need this to be done. Jesus Christ, help me. Yeah, guys. Oh, my God. Yeah, we'll put a link to the movie if you guys want to check it out. But, yeah, just it's look up bad. Cricket Snapper. It's fucking so bad. Man. It's bad. It's so bad. All right, let's go over to the handy-dandy Shakespearean notebook. No, fuck. No, <laughs> Jesus. God. My spirit. Who uh. was the lubberly, muddy, meddled star lackey? Who uh. was the awkward, clumsy... Dull spirited one who starves his servants. Helena? Helena. Everybody. Everybody. Oh, no. <laughs> this film. The, honestly, the every film? single insult in this fucking book is this film. Right. Oh. My That's it. God. Thank you for doing this with me. Thank I, you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Honestly, I, I, no. I apologize, but. No. Still, it was an it experience. Was, it, was it was an something experience. different to do. It was good. So, wow. all right, now give it to me. Okay, so do I, your worst. Oh, I really do your worst. I don't know if I master. Really, don't you dare! I don't. Okay, so I really don't know if I want to like punch you in the gut just yet. Oh, oh, oh! You're gonna make me. St- for this. Do a little bit. No, I don't think I will. I don't know what the fuck. Okay, I've been really trying to think about what I wanted to do. And the only thing that I can think of is that for like the last couple of days, I've been, watch- I've been watching the Matrix trilogy. Mm-hmm. And it for some reason just made me like, okay, why not? Let's fucking try it. So I'm thinking let's do the first Matrix. Okay. I'm thinking we'll do that. We'll kind of cleanse the palate of this mess. Uh-huh. That we just watched uh-huh. and have a little more sci-fi action. Okay. Okay, so we're yeah. going to do that. All right, guys. The Matrix Part 1. Part 1. So we'll see you, Kath. Contemplators, thank you so <laughs> much for joining us on this wonderful <laughs> afternoon, evening, night. Please like, subscribe. You can find us on almost all podcasting platforms. Yes, guys. And we are all over the World Wide Web. We are on Twitter, movies underscore pod. We are on Instagram, movies.contemplation underscore pod. We have an email, movies.contemplation at gmail.com. And guys, we are also on Facebook, Movies and Contemplation Podcast. You heard it here, gang. The Matrix. Next time. I know Kung Fu. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share.